United Church of Christ. We are so glad you're here to worship with us. We have a number of announcements to help bring us into community together. Every Sunday we do have Bible study uh, in person here at St. John's at 9 a.m. All are welcome and we, we enjoy the vast, vast array of discussion. We have a number of different events and things happening at the church. We have talks on Mondays here at 11 o'clock. It meets down in the fellowship hall. Habitat for Humanity Board will meet in the conference room at 6.30 on Monday. We have office hours at the church from Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 9 to noon. We, you are, If you have any business that you'd like to take to the church staff or the office, you can bring it at that time, or you can call me anytime. CORE meets Wednesdays at 2 o'clock. It is a program through the health department that helps people who just need a boost in life and good support. And we have AA that meets on Fridays at 6 p.m. as well as an AA meeting that meets on Wednesdays. So if you are interested in any of those events, we also have a number of online events this week that have to do with the UCC in a larger manifestation. So um, every Wednesday, the conference, our regional conference, gets together and has a kind of informational fellowship space online through Zoom. That happens Wednesday at 3 o'clock. So if you are interested in learning more about how the church functions in a broader arena, then this is a great opportunity. You'll also have the chance to meet different leaders in the church in um, our smaller vicinity, in the national church, in Chicago, in our statewide region, things like that. So if you are interested in learning more, please uh, talk to me and I will get you the link. Our T. Perk group, Thriving Pastors in Revitalizing Congregations, we have five members in the church, six members in the church who are part of that group. We will be engaged in a workshop uh, days this week. So Wednesday and Thursday, our team Kirk will be doing an online program with the National Church and um, hopefully we'll have a lot of interesting things to share after. So uh, keep, keep your ears open. With that, are there any other special announcements? Our other item on the board is our Boone County Hunger Coalition, St. John's. I uh, engage in the Boone County Hunger Coalition. This is usually a short online meeting, and it talks with the pantries, the food banks, the community gardens, the community meal, all the places that help provide food to the community. And St. John's is one of those places, so we try to continue to engage with the Hunger Coalition. There is a Facebook group. If you are someone who is in need of food security or wants to help spread the word, we invite you to learn more, find the Facebook group, be engaged, and if you'd like to come to the meetings, you are very welcome, and I can get you that information as well. We are doing Trunk or Treat, yay! October 31st, 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, right here in the church parking lot. So plan accordingly. That is right. On Halloween, it falls on a Sunday this year, so we are taking uh, reservations for parking spots now. So if you are interested and able to bring a car and hand out candy, Please make sure it is pre-wrapped and it has to be store-bought this year. Uh, please sign up. We will have different slots available if you need electrical access to make your trunk extra fancy or if you just want to open the trunk and have a bowl of candy. I promise you the kids will still like it. So please be a part. It is always a lot of fun and uh, it is... It is something that brings in the 
the whole community. So we have a number of our groups who have already asked to sign up for Slack. So um, we we are excited for this fellowship time. Are there any others? Then let us begin our worship by lifting our voice together as one in our choral introit. We are one in the spirit. We pray. 
Pray these prayers as your Son teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join together in our hymn found in the hymnal, hymn number 22, sing praise to God.
or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield fruit in their season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Someone 
one shares a piece of themselves, we are a little more connected. When psalmists and epistles write into what became our holy scripture, they are sharing pieces of themselves for a community. They're sharing life experiences and wisdom that they have seen bear great fruit. And oftentimes they are calling upon a community or an individual who has struggled and fallen short. The best sermons are the ones that recognize where I have fallen short and call me to a better place. And sometimes I need a little of that anger to come out towards me so that I can see how I have impacted another. And sometimes I need that peace and sense of acceptance that will bring me into the fold and invite me in a way that I want to do better. James writes in his epistle in a way that calls upon people to really look into themselves. He calls upon individuals to recognize how they are turning in their souls because they look out at the world. And whether they look out with envy or look out with anger, he calls on them to recognize that it's not about the world as much as how you act in the world. You have no control over your brother and sister except in the way you personally act and with a prayer that it might influence them to do better as well. When you hear a great sermon or a prophetic word that calls on you to lift yourself to a higher understanding or a higher way of living, you draw yourself nearer to God. You are given the strength to resist all that calls upon you and distracts you to turn off those other voices that tell you otherwise. Tell you that you are not worth it. Tell you that so and so is the reason everything is wrong. That ease you into the comfort of you need not do anything. It's everyone else's problem. James calls on the people to realize that you are the one who preaches through your actions. And with every kindness, you show God to another. With every stumbling block that you put out of your envy or your hatred or your anger or your bitterness, all those times that we show that unchristian or ungodly moment in our lives, James reminds us that you have put those blocks not only in front of yourself, but others. So submit yourself to God, he says. Resist the devil, because the devil loves those stumbling blocks. The devil loves the more turning we get in our soul, the more failures and more frustrations that we dwell on, the more we fail to draw ourselves up. Our psalmist writes about how we can come to be more righteous and more joyful the way we can call upon the world, call upon the Lord. Our psalmist also, though, recognized that churning in a way a little different from James 
and it turns in them and calls upon God to root out that wickedness. You'll see this quite often in the book of Psalms, where the, the anger and heartbreak and sadness is just laid bare. Where you get those disturbing scriptures that if cherry pickers wanted to, they could make the most violent book ever written with phrases like bash the baby's head against the rock, which is a terrible idea, but it expresses a deep and painful emotion and bitterness that is a reality to life. The Bible doesn't tell us not to feel the sadness, the bitterness, the anger. But what we're supposed to do is call upon ourselves to deal with those things. The psalmist deals with it by writing it and turning it into song, and none of those violent phrases are left alone. All of those violent phrases are then couched in the acceptance and call upon God's will, knowing that as much anger and frustration and violence that might turn inside the psalmist, they know that they are to submit to God and God's will be done. And so we see sometimes the psalmist literally working through the process, working through the pain, and calling themselves back to sing God's praise. James calls upon people to work through all, all those stumbling blocks and negativities by doing. James is very much calling a community to action, to stand up and live the life you wish others would live. Live the life that you feel God calling all to. You don't have to go out and tell everyone what they're doing wrong in the world all the time, because if you're living your life right, they can see how that looks. And if you share it in a loving way, then they might accept it as well. I remember our first few years of marriage, we both had an idea of the way we were going to live. Two individuals, that idea that they say in weddings to become one, I don't know if the math works out so great, but I definitely saw the two lives and that difficult math that came after. We lived out these ideal lives, but forgot that we wanted occasionally to have those lives intertwined. It is easy to live out your ideal life if you don't think about living it in amongst community. But how does your ideal life change when you think about doing it in a community or creating a life that is livable in community? My ideal life is sitting on a beach and having wonderful food. But I know that that doesn't live out in community because my beloved husband hates the feeling of sand between his toes. He's not terribly fond of the sun beating down on him. And stepping into the ocean is more of a sense of terror than a sense of calm, like it might be for me. So our idea of living our best life and living out a godly life, we realize meant living in community. And that looks different than our 
selfish ideal life. I can visit a beach occasionally, but I will always come home to the sand-free, shaded space that I know dwells love. When we draw ourselves up and draw near to God, we know that God is there when we look around and we see others who are bearing good fruit. People who might be on the same journey as us, but maybe a little farther ahead so we can see how their life has flourished in a new way. We might be on a journey with someone who's lived a life very differently from ours, but they see the divine glory and celebrate God's love, and somehow it is there too. James calls the people to act, calls the people to interact with each other in love and compassion and commitment. He calls the people to recognize that you are a child of God, called to draw nearer every day through your actions and through your faith. Theologians will fight about what comes first, actions or faith, or what's more important, because sometimes there has been this idea that only your actions matter, and you have to do A, B, and C in order to be a good Christian. Well, there's another group of faith that will talk about it doesn't matter what you do as long as you have Jesus in your heart. But James is very clear about where he stands. He says faith without works is dead. You can have Jesus in your heart all your life. But if you never get off that beach and go live in community, you have a dead faith. It is no faith at all. If you cannot work a life that shows God, then how do you know God? In this day and age, it is sometimes hard to know the best action, the best way to be. And I don't know that James would have the perfect answer. But I do know that James would remind all those struggling that in the end, your goal is to be close to God and keep the stumbling blocks away from others. You cannot control others and you don't always know what others will stumble over, but you be genuine to yourself. Avoid going out and pushing things on others, but take things in as your own. Show all peaceable ways to go about conflict. Use loving words instead of fighting words. And find a way each day to submit to God and make room for changes that will happen in yourself. Too often we go into the world expecting the world to change so that we can fit into it better. But sometimes it is important to recognize how we ourselves have blocked our, blocked our own way. It is easy to think about how one group or another doesn't accept you. But perhaps sometimes our minds have created a blockade that was never there in the first place. Or has read too much into it. Or have gotten so caught up in one group that doesn't accept that we miss a community that is waiting and willing. We are a community called to love more deeply 
believe than the other. That is not to be sitting out and judging another person and comparing yourself from one to the other, but it is to sit in your own discomfort. To acknowledge the ways that you have convinced yourself you do not belong and to stand up and say, I do. I belong here and my voice matters and I will draw up. I will draw myself up to God and the world will see. May God continue to strengthen and uphold you. May we be called to a more genuine love that avoids the boastfulness and the devilish spirit that distracts and stumbles us. May we set ourselves apart in loving compassion. And may the world see this God who welcomes all. The Lord be with you. For the month of September, we celebrate the work of Remedies, which is a program in Boone County and Winnebago that specifically works to resist domestic violence and help those who are recovering from such traumatic events. For our second mile offering, we invite people to donate to Remedies. And we are thankful for all those who continue to give to St. John's General Fund that helps us continue the ministries in the church. Let us give as generously as we are able. There is online giving options through our website. And you can give in person if you put envelopes into our donation box as you exit the sanctuary. We give thanks for gifts of time and talent as well, and we recognize many who continue to help keep church running throughout the week. We give thanks for our many gifts and ask God to bless them.
forever. Amen.